Hi everyone, I'm Claire Rosalman, Certified Emotionally Focused Therapist, Supervisor and Trainer in Training. I'm also the co-director of the Australian Centre for Emotionally Focused Therapy with Dr Jennifer Fitzgerald. Today, I'm going to be talking with you about using enactments within the EFT model. Enactments are when we help an individual make contact with their inner world to find words for their feelings and experiences and then to share a piece of this with the therapist or with a part of themselves or with an important person in their life like a family member or a partner. We use enactments in all modalities of EFT for individuals, couples and families. But today I'm going to be talking with you about creating enactments in couples or family therapy. So when there are at least two people in the therapy room who are important to each other and we're trying to help them to improve their felt sense of closeness and connection. In the process research that's been conducted, looking at what it is that the therapist does that's effective in creating change in an EFT for couples session, this shows us that enactments are where the change happens. This research has identified that there are two main aspects of an EFT session that are key to creating change. And these are the depth of emotional experiencing in session and the gradual shaping of interactions to help partners to clearly express fears and needs and to move towards more positive responding with each other. And this is done through enactments. So to recap how enactments fit into the EFT model, they're used in all stages of the model and form a crucial part of the EFT tango. In move one of the EFT tango, we reflect the present process. This could be an interaction between partners or within an individual. And then in move two of the EFT tango, we explore what's happening inside for one person, which we call affect assembly and deepening. This process allows us to organise and distill the essence of the emotional experience from a soup of emotion into a coherent and clear message about a piece of that person's inner world. Once we have this organised and clear message, move three of the tango is where we prompt that person to turn and share it with their partner or a family member. We call this creating an engaged encounter or an enactment. This creates a new interaction within the individual or between two people that in time and with repetition and with increasing vulnerability changes their interactional pattern or changes their dance. In move four of the tango, we process the impact of the enactment with the speaker and with the listener, what it was like to share and to hear. And then in move five, we integrate and validate and consolidate what they did and how amazing that was and how different that was compared to how they normally interact with themselves and others, particularly when they're stuck in their old cycle or dance. So I like to think about why we enact and it helps me to remember that enactments create a new experience of the self and the other. They wobble the rigidly held assumptions in the cycle and they make an individual's inner experience relational so that they're not alone with it. We know that vulnerable emotions contain the bonding agent and when shared they create connection, a moment of contact and that that is inherently regulating. So we use enactments in stage two to restructure their attachment and to solidify a new dance. But that doesn't mean that we don't use enactments until stage two. We use them in stage one with smaller reaches. And even if the enactment doesn't go as planned and we don't get a lovely moment of contact and bonding, enactments are really useful for allowing us and our clients to see the cycle show up in the room so that we can slow it down and learn more about each partner's perspective and their need for their coping strategy. So if an enactment leads to the revealing of a block in sharing or a block in hearing, this is rich information that helps the therapy discovery process to unfold. So we know that enactments are important for our clients, but knowing what to enact can be tricky for therapists. So as a guide, it can be helpful to enact something new or different that emerges that's not normally shared with the other, like fear that lurks behind anger or a fear of disappointing the other that's not shared. 
it can also be helpful to enact something softer, something deeper or more distilled that emerges and that you can feel will create understanding and closeness through sharing. And it can also be helpful to enact positions in the dance, which might look like, I shut down because I don't want to fight with you, I don't know how else to manage, or I turn up the heat and get loud or critical when I feel that you don't see me. So let's look at how to do an enactment. So we set up the enactment by distilling the key message. We encourage the reach to happen by asking one partner to turn and tell the other, and then we process how it was to share and to hear. So in short, we set it up, we send it over, and then we process the impact. So now let's look at each of these three processes. Firstly, the setup. We use evocative questions and validation to explore what's happening for one partner inside. We slow it down, we stay with the emotion to encourage contact with it, to stretch the window of tolerance for being with that experience. And we gradually help our client to find words for that. Each time they share a piece with us, we repeat the key phrases softly and slowly to hold them there. We summarise what we are discovering, we validate how this makes sense and we lean in with curiosity. We direct their attention to the feelings in their body, to how it is to stay with this emotion in the here and now. We want the emotion to be alive and running in the present moment. We validate that they're working so hard and being so brave to let themselves touch these difficult places, let alone find the words and help us to understand this experience for them. Our summaries and clarifications distill and organise the message and make it more known and more owned by the client. In stage two, we use the same interventions, but we stay longer with the emotion. As Catherine Ream says, we linger where we want to do the work and we stretch the window of tolerance longer. We hold them right at their effective edge, right where they want to use their coping strategy of turning the heat up or down. And we help them to experience that they can stay there and interact differently with themselves there. That they can tap into the meaning of that place and allow for a different way of being with their partner as well. Then we can ask for the reach. To do this, we wanna notice the wave of the emotion and ask for the enactment as it crests. We don't wanna ask for the enactment from a cool intellectual distance because it will contain less alive emotion and that means it'll have less bonding potential in it. So once we feel that the wave is cresting and we have a good understanding of the inner experience, we ask them how it would be to turn and tell their partner. How would it be to share this with Mary? If we sense that they might be reluctant, we might slice it thinner at this stage by asking, how is it for you to even imagine sharing this part of your inner world with your partner? We can then ask them to enact a small risk. Something like, it's so hard to even imagine sharing this part of my inner world with you. It just feels too risky. It's my experience that if we kind of fluff about too much in the asking for the enactment, the emotion can subside as intellectual coping strategies can kick in and it can lose its power. So I find it's more helpful to use a simple setup. Like, could you share that with your partner? Or, wow, you're sharing so many amazing pieces of your inner world with me. Could you tell your partner about that? So whilst a simple prompt is good, it can help to provide scaffolding with words if needed. So this might look like, could you share that with your partner, that you struggle so hard to let him see this sad, scared part of you? But we might also want to invite it to be authentic by saying something like, in your words, your words will mean so much more. Could you try that? Then as they turn and share, we might need to maintain the focus by directing them to the most meaningful part if they drift away from the heat or they might move into intellectualizing or even secondary reactive coping strategies. So we do this by saying something like, can you tell Bob about the sad part of you, the part that longs to be close? 
then the final part of the enactment is where we process the reach. This is move four of the tango, where we process with the sharing partner first. We might say something like, wow, you just took such a big risk in sharing that scared, sad part of you with your partner. How was that for you to say? We want to honour the huge risk in letting their partner see that part of themselves or in reaching more vulnerably. This also primes the pump for the listening partner to see the enormity of what the other just did. So even if the speaker exits the enactment halfway through and goes into intellectual distance or into reactive positions where they could fire bullets, we pause and process what's happening for them. And we frame this as their best attempt to cope. What happened there as you began to share this vulnerable piece with Bill? Something happened, it was too risky or too much. You went to the safer, more familiar place of protest. Can you help me understand what was going on inside for you? Was that too much, too big a risk? Can we, can we just stay right here? I never want you to go further than you feel safe. Then we process with the listening partner. We might say, how is that for you to hear about Bob's sadness? That was so big for him to share in that way, so risky for him. How is it landing with you? We want to help to manage the listener's reaction with validation of any blocks that might come up for them and put those in the cycle. And these can also look like bullets where a partner is harsh or critical in response or exits where they might miss the emotional content. Typically, the listening partner will have two responses. They'll hear a little bit of the newness and a block will come up. And we want to validate both. And this is where parts language is really helpful. If some of the newness does land with them, this is really helpful for the reaching partner to hear. And if possible, it's lovely to help the listening partner to then reach back to tie a bow on this small new interaction. So this might look like, could you share with Mary how it makes you feel when you hear about her pain, how this makes you feel sad and want to comfort her? Then lastly, we want to step into move five of the tango by processing how differently they just did it. We repeat the essence of the enactment and its impact and amplify the contact that they made with each other. We want to validate and integrate what they did by summarising how each took a tentative new step out of the old cycle and into a place of connection that felt so different and pulled for different moves for each of them. That what they did today was take a small and risky step towards each other. We savour how amazing this is and how brave they are in each being willing to try new and scary things for the benefit of their relationship. We want to help them to feel a sense of hope and that we're going to do many more of these until they can step out of the old dance and find their way back to each other and into a new dance of connection and safety. So now we've looked at why enactments are important, what to enact and how to set up scaffold and process an enactment. I hope that this has been helpful for you and that you feel more confident to go out and help your clients to have more moments of connection through EFT and the use of enactments. Thanks for watching.